Hi everybody. This is Peter talking. And I have a new video for you. So I haven't been doing these videos like for like almost 10 years and uh, now I'm back. And that is because something happened in this uh, Linux on mobile devices world. And that is this great new device, uh, which is um, the Motorola Droid 4 running um, Memo Lester. No, just kidding. I mean, Memo Lester is great, but neither the device nor, um, while, while the kernel is brand new, you know, it's running a 5.6 kernel. Um, Memo Lester is really based on Devon, so no system D and Hilton, the UI known from the Nokia N900. So this is uh, some kind of uh, retrospective future, if anything, but it's working great lately. So I might do a video on that too, but this video is about something really interesting and that is the uh, Pint Phone, Pint 64 Pint Phone UV Ports Community Edition. Um, and I'm just gonna unbox this thing here. So UV Ports, as you may know, is uh, the continuation of Ubuntu Touch, uh, which was originally envisioned by Canonical around, I don't know, I didn't look this up before, so all I say may be wrong, around 2012-2013 I think. And then in maybe 2014 there was first device by BQ. Um, I think that, that's the rough timeline. And then um, they well, they made some stuff, uh, some more devices by uh, BQ and some by Meizu and, and all, the whole time it ran on the, uh, the Google Nexus 4 made by LG, which I had at the time too. So um, that's where I know UB ports, uh, Ubuntu Touch from and I still have it sitting somewhere in a drawer. Um, with now UB ports and so on, but I didn't actually take out take it out in maybe a year or so and um, Now this here is The pine phone by pine 64 pine 64 started up started out by making a board called the pine 64 and they basically um, sell devices at cost and for the software, they rely on the community. So the phone is in the box. And I'm really bad at unboxing because I haven't done this in quite a while. Um, and then there is uh, a beautiful red cable. Looking good, USB A to USB C, USB type C. Um, yeah. And now, Oh, also there's of course here some little instruction manual quick starters guide hey congratulations on receiving your Braveheart edition no that's wrong this is you you reports edition oh well um, somehow the Braveheart thing is in there and this is a quite short quick start guide um, how it should be charged and whatnot. I mean operation I mean who cares about this? Let's see if this powers on, but I think I saw somewhere that you have to open it first. And then oh, we have to open it. I guess here. Because this is a phone where you can you know in 2020 where you can put exchange the battery as a user which is quite nice I appreciate that a lot because you know all those devices that get uh, thrown away because it's so tough to change the battery and then landing in a landfill um, 
it's just not good for the environment. So I think I'm slowly getting there. Yeah. Looking good. This UbiPorts logo here is, well, looks like it's printed on there. Um, someone told me before that it might be just a sticker. It's not, I think. But uh, I mean, I will get, I will go into that later, maybe if anybody cares. But I really hope you don't care whether this is a sticker or not. So that's the battery. It's 2,800 milliampere hours at 3.8 volts. That's like yeah, 10 watt hours, 11 watt hours. And that is pretty great. So this thing here is the Quecto modem. Um, this uh, Pine phone runs with a Alvena A64 CPU, like on the original Pine 64 board, a single board computer. And here the SIM would go. I don't have a SIM right now lying around. Um, and then here, those tiny switches are, um, well, People call them kill switches, so you can turn off certain features of the device in hardware, like you can turn off this modem by Quecto, um, which is 4G, 4G uh, and 3G and 2G, and uh, you can turn off the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, microphone, rear camera, front camera, and also the headphones, so you can make sure that this phone um, doesn't... Uh, Listen, I think, if you turn all that stuff off, assuming they don't use the speaker, but maybe the microphone thing or the headphones thing turns the speaker off too. So that might be something for uh, the next Edward Snowden, so that people don't have to put their phones in the fridge. If everybody had a fine pine phone, which, um, yeah, let's admit it, that's quite unlikely. But uh, let's just envision such a funny future. So let me put that back, back, back on. And I think I've got it. And overall, I have to say this device feels nice in the hand. It's a, uh, uh, eighteen to nine or two to one x aspect ratio, and um, it's just seven twenty p. And it's um, a diagonal dio of almost six inches, five point nine five, I think. So let me try to turn this on. There's a red light going on, and it's turning green. And point sixty four bootloader logo, I guess that is. So this is going quite well, I think. So let's see. Just have first boot here, and then I think I'm done with this video. I've rambled enough. Um, yeah, that's Ubuntu Touch by UB Ports. Starting. Actually, Ubuntu Touch has never been. Uh, quite my cup of tea and I just bought this phone with this software because I just wanted to have it on UB ports uh, are, they are doing a great community effort but from the get-go uh, Ubuntu touch was criticized for many uh, canonical invented for using too many canonical invented technologies uh, like um, the Mir display server, which now is very and capable, capable, by the way. Um, then uh, I think it used Upstart and not Systemd. Those click packages, which were the prototype for snap packages, all invented by Canonical. There may be more technologies like that they used, and then the usual drama around. Um, uh, what do you call it? Um, canonical license 
agreement or something, CLA, that uh, forces uh, contributors to uh, well lose some of their copyright and turn it over to Canonical. Um, that may have held up contribution here, but all in all, I think for a general user um, system, they did quite a good job. Um, I will skip the Wi-Fi screen here and set it up later. Um, I am, you can know that, in Munich, Germany. And this device is called Pinephone. So yeah, oh shit, it's tight. Um, so they got quite some flag for that back in the day, um, but I think many of these issues are no longer issues now that UB ports has taken over. And I really admire the work because this is, I think, uh, the operating system. And I will try to make more videos on many of those running on this Pine phone, like um, uh, Post Market OS with uh, two GUIs. Like there's a, um, <clears throat> there's Plasma Mobile, and there's. Uh, stuff developed by Purism based on GNOME technologies uh, called FOSH and th that's very interesting um, then there is still Nemo Mobile the basis for Selfish OS. Selfish OS is supposed to run on this device as well um, and then there are many more efforts and those are all very interesting and I'm really looking forward to play with those and I think that we all, um, we all, meaning uh, everybody who cares about uh, mobile Linux, um, can be very happy that this Ubuntu Touch is around because it's something that we, uh, that's the most likely uh, usable for our families if you want to give them a pure Linux phone and get them off of Android or something. Look, this is really like like a professional OS, of course, now without Wi-Fi, it's pretty, a mobile connection is pretty much useless, but see all those apps here and yeah, it's it's pretty good ready and sure some stuttering but you have to take into account this quad core a53 processor is quite low end but today and the hardware I think isn't fully optimized yet so this might become even smoother and I will talk about that in a later video so thank you for listening and um, the blog will be online soon. And, well, sorry, this isn't a podcast. Uh, I've been doing podcasts lately. So uh, thank you for watching, of course. Bye.